Welcome back to you and welcome back to Ranger Nick. That's right. After a month hiatus, UGA Ag Professor Dr. Nick Furman is back. And this time he is giving us a lesson on how a simple walk along a creek can quickly turn into a treasure hunt of sorts. Everybody, Ranger Nick here back with you. Great to see you again. It's summertime in Athens, Georgia, and we're here today along a creek right outside of the University of Georgia, and it's summertime, and it's vacation time. And I don't know if you're like me, but going down the road, driving on vacation, have you ever been driving, look down at the dashboard and see that little indicator light come on that says that something's wrong with the engine? We're going to talk about indicators today, but not that something's wrong with the engine, but that something's going on in your creek or in your river. In fact, good things are going on if you find some of the things that we're going to find today along this stream. We're going to determine how healthy this stream is today, and I hope we're going to find some cool things out there. So I'm glad you're with us. Well, we're along this creek out here today, folks, looking around for these indicators, and there are really three different kinds of indicators I want to talk to you about today. First being biological indicators, life form in the stream, fish, some of the insects I hope that we're going to find together today. Biological is one, physical is another. And if you look down at the creek we're looking at right now, you see a lot of water movement. And the more water movement is actually the better. If you find waterfalls in your creek, these are things that are putting oxygen into the water. So this moving water is a great indication that at least there's some oxygen getting into this water. Biological, you've got the physical looking at the water, and then we can look at chemical. That's things like pH, dissolved oxygen. Those are things that the Cooperative Extension Service in your town could help you with on your creek. If you were to take the water to them, they can help you with that. I want to start looking around for those biological kinds of things today and kind of start flipping some rocks over with you while you're out here with me. Let's take this guy right here. I'm going to flip them over real slowly to not disturb the water too much. And I'm going to see if I can find some little insects that are attached to the bottom of this rock. Often these little insects tell us that because they're there, the water quality is really, really good. And in fact, I look at this, oh man, and check this out. This is so cool. This is actually on the bottom of this rock. It looks like a little stone straw. A little stone tube, that is actually a little caddis fly, and he has made a little stone house on the underside of this rock. So this tells me that this stretch of stream right here is really doing well. Otherwise, that little fly would not have laid its eggs, and this little guy would not be there. Another thing to look for, and I know it sounds kind of obvious, but if you don't know what you're looking for, you don't know. Look out there across the water, and you'll see these little black specks. Those are all little snails. And little snails tell us that the water and the oxygen oxygen here in the water are doing well, and in fact, they're on the side of the bank because just a second ago, the sunlight was just on them, and they're going into the sunlight. They're actually feeding in the water and filtering that water, similar to what a clam or an oyster would do. We got to make this quick. I just came across something. Talk about biological indicators. Check this out. Man, you're not going to believe this. Look at this. Under the leaves over here, look at this. Eastern box turtle. Look at this little guy, probably five or six years old, eastern box turtle. Funny, they call these guys box turtles because when you find them, usually they tuck right into their shell and fold themselves up like a box would enclose itself. This one is obviously, looks kind of used to people. And look at this, little female eastern box turtle, beautiful. This time of the year, it's funny, so many of these turtles are coming out and we're seeing these guys in the road, particularly after a rain. Look at that little face, looks like she's kind of smiling at us. We see after a rain crossing the road and folks if you find one of these guys in the road and they happen to be facing this direction if you can safely do it put them on that side of the road move them out of the way these guys can't run very fast and as long as you're not risking your life work to save these little guys another thing I want to tell you about about her is that so often people will find eastern box turtles and often find the same one over and over again on their property and they ask me Ranger Nick how do I know it's the same one they'll say well I figured that out I'm gonna paint my initials on its back with nail polish Oh, not a good idea. That ruins their little camouflage, and they're often eaten by foxes and raccoons. So what a neat biological indicator that this woodland, this creek is doing well. Little eastern box turtle. I love it. Talk about an excellent biological indicator. Man, what an awesome time. Back out here again today along this little creek. Found a caddis fly. Found that little eastern box turtle. 
excellent time together with you for sure. If you have stories about rescuing animals, maybe an eastern box turtle or other kind of turtle from the road, send them to me right there at that rangernick, UGA at gmail.com. And for the Farm Monitor, I'm Ranger Nick, and I want you to remind you that enthusiasm is contagious, so pass it on. I'll see you next time.